Hi Genevieve, I'm Juthika and this is my husband Evan. Hi Jen. And thank you so much for selecting me as one of the people that you're going to do uh, your swing analysis on. So I would like to give a huge shout out to my friends and family who helped me get chosen and a big big thanks to my husband who actually got on board really quickly to get all my likes and comments pretty quickly. Um, and I have, uh, with, I have with me him today uh, because he was a big factor. He is still a very big factor in my golf life. He actually helped me get started with golf. So I have him here today to give you my story from his perspective as to how I got started with golf. So Evan? Well, I'll give them the beginning because, you know, I got you started, but then you took it from there. So when I was in graduate school, I started playing golf. There was a nine-hole course just off campus, and I really got hooked into the game. And then uh, we were together at that point, and then when we finally got our jobs and we moved in together, uh, there were lots of courses around where we live. And uh, initially, you weren't really very interested, right? You didn't really like it very much. It was very difficult. And uh, I had no idea about golf. Yeah, you, you didn't grow up knowing about golf. You had no idea what was no. going on. And then... Uh, once I got you into it, it, it was uh, a little bit of a different story, right? You, we got you an inexpensive set of starter clubs, and yeah. we have a nice par 3 course right near us, and I used to take you there. And what was it like for you in the beginning? Well, in the beginning, I couldn't even make contact with the golf ball, and it was really, really frustrating because, as you know, and anyone that plays golf knows that, you know, if you're not making contact with the ball, it's not a fun sport at all. So I struggled a lot in the beginning, but the fact that I was playing in a par 3 course made it manageable. Um, but as uh, the winter came along that year, I actually started practicing at home. So we got a mat and some foam balls, and I started hitting golf balls off of the mat in my apartment at the time. And uh, You just take slow-mo videos of you? Yes, exactly, slow-mo. So he was always there, like patiently capturing every move, all my swings. Um, and then when spring came along, um, I went back to the golf course and I actually made my very first contact with the golf ball. And when I saw the golf ball... First, first good contact. Yes. And when I first saw my golf ball kind of just fly up there in the air, I, was, I thought to myself, man, this feels really nice. I think I can actually do this. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we just kept playing like that. And, you know, I was always hopeful that it would stick, but you never know because golf is a very frustrating game as you can progress in golf and feel like you're on top of the world and then you can lose it and then feel like you've lost your way and frustration can happen and that can really, it can scare people away from the game, right? It can make yes. you feel like, you know, it's not worth it for you anymore. And to me, one of the most fascinating things about golf is how you feel, you know, one day that you understand all about it and you're playing the greatest round of your life and you think you got it and then the next day you come back to the course and you cannot score as well and you're not hitting the ball very well. And that keeps happening over and over and now I have seen, after having played for five years, I have seen that cycle repeat over and over again to the point now I know it's just part of the game and you just got to accept it the way it is. You got to roll with the punches and uh, so you started getting a little bit better and then... In the beginning, you didn't keep score at all. You weren't keeping score at all. You were just trying to get out there and have a little bit of fun. And we started keeping score at our local par three. And, and then on the full courses, started to notice that you were getting an awful lot of bogeys. And some pars, but mostly bogeys. And we started thinking, you know, you, you got to be close to breaking 90. And I did. And you did. And I did. And you finally did. I broke 90 for the first time two years after I started playing golf. And since then, I have broken 90 multiple times. And this year, I broke 80. And I actually have my scorecard here with my 77 this year. So I would like to treasure it since I don't know if it will happen again. <laughs> <laughs> I think it will happen again. You shot some 82s, right? Some 83s, yes. some very low 80 rounds. But that was a very exciting round. That course, our local course, you had some struggles on that course. And... Uh, that became a weekly course for us. We There's so many courses around where we live that there's just a lot to choose from. But this one is very close to us and has been like a, a favorite of ours over this summer specifically. Yes. And uh, you you were plus four on the front nine. 
And then uh, on the back nine, you sort of lost count of what you were doing, but you knew you were doing well. Yeah, and I've realized one thing with golf is when you put the score in your brain, you are just not able to hit well. So I tried to kind of not think about exactly what my score was that day. And when I counted it up in the end, it was a 77. Oh, come on. Don't brush over all the fun details. So on the 16th hole, which was a par 5 that she has had trouble with, uh, she got to the green in regulation, which was not typical of you for that hole because it's kind of an uphill hole. Mm -hmm. Made it a little bit more difficult. And then it started raining. Uh, and actually a little bit of lightning, I think. And she knew she was doing really well, but you didn't want to quit, did you? No, nope, no. Nope. <laughs> and I thought to myself that I don't care if it rains or if lightning strikes, I am going to finish this round because I want my 80 breaker that day. I always say it's so funny what golf does to you. People that would normally never want to hang out outside during the rain or if there was any kind of chance of bad weather, when you're a golfer, you tend to find excuses for yourself to stay out there. And um, then when we got to the 18th hole, one little quick cool story. So 18th hole, uphill par four, not too long. Uh, she had a good drive right up the middle and uh, hit a very thin second shot and got to the back of the green, behind the green actually. And the green from the back to the front has a top tier, a middle tier, and a lower tier. And the hole was in the middle tier. And you were behind the green, and that's a d dangerous place to be because if you chip it too hard, you're going to roll all the way to the front of the green, maybe off the green. Yep. And you didn't know what your score was at that point, but you said, Evan, Evan, come help me. You know, I, I know I'm close, but I, I need, you know, help me with this. Uh, what should I do with this chip shot here? So, yep. you know, I, I'm standing in the middle and you're out there and I'm, and I'm looking at the way the green slopes down towards the hole. And I said, okay, you know, uh, right where I'm standing, I think this is where you need to hit the chip shot. And uh, so, you know, you got there and you got all ready and you got yourself all geared up. And then when I thought you were, you know, you were all set, I kind of stepped aside quietly and you executed that chip shot perfectly. It landed right where we said it would, trickled off into the rough, lost enough speed, and then ended up on that middle tier. Yep. And sure enough, you made the I putt. Made that putt. And, and you I were like, I don't know what I got. I don't know what I got. Let's check it out. <laughs> and, uh, and it ended up being a 77. Yep. It did. And since I started playing golf, we did uh, play in several scramble tournaments here and there. And I have a couple of little awards to show you. This is a little certificate that I got. It was like a $25 certificate for a closest to pin. And I used that money to buy him a she golf t-shirt. Me a t-shirt. And I got another little award this year. This is like a longest driver award from another scramble this year. Now you are asking Jen for some help with your distance. Yes. Which has been an on and off thing. There have been some days where you have great distance and other days where you haven't been able to get good distance. And I think it's been a puzzling thing for you as to why, what's different on some of those days. Yeah, and, and I really hope that the swing analysis will help me. Uh, and I'm a big, big, big fan of your videos, your golf swing, everything about your, your attitude on the course. Because, you know, I tend to get very hard on myself if I'm not playing well, uh, even for my level. And uh, that doesn't help. Um, and kind of watching your attitude and how you deal with some of those bad shots. Uh, it really makes me want to be like you more. And um, the fact that you chose me for your swing analysis, it really means a lot to me. So thank you very much. Yes, and we found you through your collaboration with Golf Sidekick. What a player. Been a big inspiration for me, actually, right? Teaching yes, me course absolutely. management. Mm -hmm. In fact, I use his teachings to finally break 80 myself uh, for the first time at the end of last year in which I've broken a number of times since then. Yes. But um, thank you so much, Jen, for selecting Jutika. She was so excited when she got that email, as was I. And I really want to emulate your Zen personality in the golf course, your Zen-like swing, because it just looks so effortless and it really looks picture perfect. And, um, you know, uh, any bit of professional advice that you could give would be a real, real help for me. Yeah, and so we're really grateful so to have you as part of our golf journey here that we can always remember. So thank you once again very much for your help. Thank you, Jen, and I'm looking forward to my swing lesson. All right.
This lady needs to work um, on less hand rotation or less hand and wrist and club face opening to start with. Uh, as you see, when she gets like uh, roughly hip height, um, her arms are really pinned across her chest. Uh, they're way inside, obviously the club being way inside. Uh, from the front on look, she has a little, let's call it reversed, um, uh, like a reverse pivot, uh, no body shapes to it. Um, she's sort of like stuck on, on, on her left side. She's tilted way left. Um, but generally, I would say fix the club face first uh, and getting a little bit better body structure on the way back and just take it from there. All right, so now we are going to talk about Jutika swing. So Jutika, thank you very much for sending in your video. Um, I'm really glad to read about your story and I can't wait to hear more. I love that you picked up golf. Um, obviously, you're in the US, so I know that you have access to practice. So let's talk about what you can do. So based on what we saw about what Eric said, some of the things that you might need to work on is the first thing that he sees is you use a lot of hands when you take away. So a lot of this, so a lot of wrist rotation, which in turn makes you go quite inside. So naturally, what we want to do is come more out here. When you use a lot of wrist rotation, you tend to go inside because what you're doing is your wrist is opening. So what you can try doing is, first of all, try to just use no wrist, quiet down your wrist on your backswing, like this versus like this. So you see it from a front view, it just looks like my wrists are pretty flat. They're not rotating. You're just letting, if you look at this triangle, you're just following it and letting your wrist be quiet instead of rotating your wrist, which opens your club face and makes you go inside. So in your swing, you kind of do this. You open, you use your wrist to you open it, you go inside, and then you reverse pivot. So this reverse pivot with your arms very close to your body because you're using so much risk, it's really getting you very stuck on your backswing. So that's not what we want. So first of all, obviously you want to work that the biggest point for you is to use less wrist. Some people find it beneficial to just use their right hand, put it on the left wrist, just push it up here and then grip back. So from this view, this is what it looks like. Use your right hand on your left wrist, just push it back one line, and then grip it. So you can get the feel of that. So this would feel like a very, very different feel for you. You'd probably feel like you're out here, because normally you take the club back with your wrist, and then you go inside. So we are going from here to here, which is a massive difference. So that is the biggest thing that I want you to work on first for now. Really just try to get that feel of very quiet wrist, naturally letting the club go back without having to use your wrist and rotate. You're just letting it naturally go back. And you'll find that you don't have to bring your club inside because a lot of people, I feel like they bring the club inside because they feel like they want to push it there. Naturally, when you turn, your club is going to go inside anyway. So you don't have to force your club to go inside. The more you force it to go inside, it's actually going to go behind you, right? So what you want to do, quiet wrist, you can do this really slow to start. Just take a very slow back swing right here. Try to go higher, let the wrist naturally hinge. So you don't have to try to bend it. All you have to do is just feel like you're very quiet wrist. So it's just going up. And then once you do this, I want you to feel it. The reason why I want you to do it very slowly because I want you to feel when you do this, slow. And when you do slow, you can also feel your body weight. So I don't want you to feel this, which you kind of go a lot onto your left side. I want you to feel quite balanced. For you, you might even feel the opposite way because you're so used to being this way. So what we're going to work on is quite wrist, really slow swing. This is going to be our practice. Quiet wrist, quiet wrist, quiet. Over here, it will start to naturally hinge. Don't try to hinge it. Just let it naturally hinge. 
and make sure this whole time you see my body is my body is barely moved so it's just naturally go letting it go up and then swing you can start with really slow swings maybe start with kind of like a chip over here over here but then go slightly higher and then eventually more full so it's your wrist which once you get that you can start working more on your body positions so as i said do take a lot of videos that's going to be great take videos look at it for you you're going to feel like you're almost not moving anything so it's like no body movement no wrist movement very very centered so all you're doing is quiet wrist quiet wrist quiet wrist body no move don't do this Stable over here, keep centered, and then come down. So again, very, very quiet wrist, no body movement. So from this view, same focus, quiet wrist, quiet, 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 no body movement. So what you normally look like is from here, once you start using your wrist, you kind of start going backwards this way. So again, quite wrist and no reverse pivot, so balanced and follow through. So what we're really going to work on is starting with is your wrist, um, quiet wrist, as I've said 10,000 times in this video, quiet wrist, you're going to hear it in your dreams. <laughs> and then just work on the rest as they come. But the first is definitely going to be this position right here, your takeaway right here. In fact, you can just keep doing this. Hold the club. Feel Almost feel like you're very straight arms. Just to start to get the feel. See from the side, this is what it looks like. I'm not moving my wrist at all. Whereas you kind of do this. So, this quiet wrist. Just to start off. And you can even start doing that with chipping. It's great if you start with chipping. And then start moving on to longer swings. So thanks a lot, Jutika, for joining this little contest. And I look forward to seeing your progress. And to you having more fun rounds with your husband. <laughs>